Good morning and welcome to a very special episode of The Angry Astronaut. I am sitting here with Noel Pearson, who's the director of sales at Zero Gravity Corporation. And as you might have been able to tell from the title of this video, this is about an organization that provides a microgravity experience without having to pay Blue Origin $20 million to go there. So that being the case, these guys have a lot of experience in training folks. So I want to start there because that's where, where my viewers, you know, what they want to hear about. Who have you folks been involved in training and what's involved in their training program with your company? Great question. So Zero Gravity has trained SpaceX's Inspiration4 crew that went up in September of 2021. We've worked with Axiom to train some of their astronauts in May of 2021. They'll be going and launching in February of 2022. We've also had several Blue Origin flyers go up with us, as well as a few Virgin Galactic flyers train with us in the past few months. So that's been a great opportunity for Zero Gravity and involved in that training, all of these astronauts and future astronauts have the opportunity to acclimate themselves in a zero gravity environment so that way when they go up into orbit or they go into space they're not flailing around they're not kicking all over the place they have the opportunity to enjoy the view out the window and see the earth have the overview effect and that's what we want them to achieve Excellent. So yeah, I mean, a lot of folks don't consider this particular issue is that, you know, when you go up on New Shepard, when you go up on VSS Unity, you've got three and a half, maybe four minutes before you have to get back in your seat. And so you want people who are familiar with the zero g environment and can operate in it before you know so that they'll be able to maximize that three and a half to four minutes is that pretty much what you're saying exactly what we're saying so what we typically see is that it takes a few parabolas aboard g-force one in order for people to get acclimated in a zero gravity environment people's first instinct is that they'll want to flail around they want to swim but there's nothing there for their body to resist and so it takes probably about two to three minutes already to get acclimated in that environment and then you think beyond that when you get to minute five and six you're maybe feeling ready to do a few flips a few turns maybe catch some uh, skittles jelly beans or water so tell me something now that we have you know virgin galactic in the news we've got blue origin and new shepherd in the news all the time you know an inspiration was on netflix for heaven's sake you know what kind of interest are you getting i mean is, is your business increasing a lot or you know compared to what it was a few years ago Absolutely. I would say that the business has definitely been increasing over the past few months. When we saw SpaceX take up Inspiration4, they were on Netflix, and we saw Blue Origin go up, we saw Virgin Galactic go up. All of our seats aboard Zero-G have been sold out, and they continue to sell out all of our flights aboard public flights. But not only that, we see an increase of those who want to do research on board that eventually will go up to the International Space Station or perhaps go into orbit. Now, we're talking about you know scientific research my viewers are certainly interested in that when people talk about you know the application the practicality of microgravity of going to space and you know most of the the main media sources are just talking about billionaires going on joy rides when few people talk about the scientific benefit that microgravity research can bring can you give me some examples of universities companies that sort of thing who have done experiments with you happy to so there have been several recent experiments and I think with the commercialization of space you're seeing a lot of people being able to find business applications here and there's a lot of new discovery and research going into different operations one of the more interesting companies we had come up was uh, Technion out of Israel and they wanted to understand water dynamics in a microgravity environment and their goal was to actually create telescope lenses using liquid and manipulating that liquid in a microgravity environment to see how it would operate in space to magnify stars, asteroids, and planetary bodies far away instead of having to use glass on a regular basis. That way they can actually control the zoom based on how the liquid moves in space in real time. 
Wow. So, so they within you know, and just to explain to my viewers, you know, even though you guys are providing several minutes worth of microgravity, it's in 30 second increments. So they're able to accomplish what they need to do in that 30 seconds. Start over again with another. 30, they, they they can accomplish that. They're able to. So on the research flights, we run through several more parabolas. Um, they'll typically have about 30 parabolas to get a better understanding of their experience. But Technion, for example, they did two to three days of parabolic flight to get a better understanding of the research. So they're able to reset, pause, and then make changes based on what they see in each 30 second increment. You do need an expanded time based on what you're studying. For instance, we had another college come up recently and they were developing microgreens so they could grow plant some food in space or at the ISS for astronauts. And they needed to understand how they could move water through a filtration system to water these plants in microgravity. Um, and they were able to make a lot of headway in just one single flight of 30 parabolas. Interesting. This actually connects or is a good segue to an application that is going to be incredibly important to future exploration of the solar system, which is low Earth orbit refueling. Liquids obviously don't behave the same in microgravity as they do in normal gravity. You have bubbles forming, you know, in the liquid and that sort of thing. So within that 30-second time frame, that sort of thing, have you done any experimentation with transferring liquid from one container to another, or could you do something like that? Yeah, the the um, college experiment, experiment regarding watering microgreens was that exactly. So they needed to figure out how to funnel and create force to move water in certain directions through hoses and tubes to actually make contact with the soil so they could grow everything. And with things going upside down and left and right, the structure and engineering behind it was the main component of their experiment. Do you have any idea of, of how they overcame some of the issues, like you know, bubbles clogging the lines, that sort of thing? I don't offhand, but we have uh, an actual interview and articles posted on LinkedIn with these colleges. So if you go to Go0G on LinkedIn or Zero-G Corporation, you can find a little bit more about the research and what went into it. We actually also did an interview with Technion. Um, there's about 30 minutes of them talking about their experiment, which is really fascinating. Great. Um, I will make sure to provide those links in the description of this video along with everything else associated with Zero G. So, you know, you're saying all your flights are booked. How often are you taking to the air per month? So we typically fly, uh, public flights, we typically fly about four or five a week or four or five a month. Uh, those range across the United States in the next month will be in Miami, Florida. We'll be out in Long Beach, California for the Super Bowl. We'll be back at Kennedy Space Center, Houston, Austin, all sorts of places. What you don't see on a typical schedule is we do do private charters uh, for either families or media productions where people want to maybe capture that amazing scene where you're in zero gravity. Right. Now, did you guys, how about movies? Have you done, uh, have you worked any sort of movie sets and that sort of thing where people have to simulate being in microgravity in space? Done any of that kind of work? We do media productions quite often, um, and those flights are generally scheduled around our consumer flights where we're located in the country. One of the more fun ones we had recently was Team Liquid announced um, that Coinbase was going to be one of their new sponsors, and they did a media production on board Zero G that turned out fantastic. This is all very exciting. So um, another question, I mean, who are your who are your competitors? Who are the big guys out there who are, or is there anybody? In the United States, there are no competitors. Um, I would say that, I would say even in France and Russia, those are the only two other planes that are out there. There's CNAS in France, and then they're in Russia, it's in Star City on the Aleutia. And those are two different planes than ours. There's the A319 that's out of France, and then I don't remember what it is in Russia, but those are our only competitors throughout the globe. I would say we fly a lot more often, though, than our, some of our competitors do, and we are open to the public, which isn't something that they are. Really? So you guys, to be clear, if I'm understanding you correctly, you are the only vomit comet kind of experience available to the average person in the world. Is that correct? 
You can go and fly over in Star City on your own. You can do that as well in France, but the only thing is that it's not as readily available. It's not as accessible as it is here in the United States. Okay, so you guys are more focused on the public experience, if I understand what you're telling me. Next to our competitors, yes. We provide um, an opportunity on a regular basis throughout the entire year for people to take zero gravity flights and experience what it is like to be an astronaut. So explain to me, you know, the process. Let's say, okay, I you know, show up at your office and I, I definitely want to do this. I want to, you know, experience this. What's involved in, you know, the pre-flight process? What's involved in the experience and after the flight? And, you know, what can I expect? Yeah, a typical day generally starts about 9 a.m. We'll have you arrive at our FBO. Let's take uh, the New York flights that are coming up um, in Memorial Weekend later this year. We'll have you arrive at the FBO, which is going to be Blade Helicopters. You'll get to take a helicopter ride from Blade Helicopters in downtown New York over to Newark Airport. We'll do some basic coach training, give you a flight suit, um, some other fun swag, a light breakfast, and then we'll fly up into our designated airspace. Flight time generally takes an hour and a half to two hours. And what we'll do is we'll fly in a parabolic flight pattern where the plane goes nose high and then tilts and goes nose down. When it goes nose down, we'll experience that zero gravity or microgravity environment. What's fun about this is we can replicate Martian gravity or lunar gravity. So you can do a lot of different things. You can feel like you're Charlie Duke bouncing around the moon, which is a blast. And over the course of the flight, we'll run through 15 parabolas. You'll get a total of seven to eight minutes of microgravity experience, which is the funnest part about the whole thing. Yeah. We'll return back to New York and then head over to the FBO in uh, New York City and we'll do a champagne toast and everybody will kind of uh, giggle and laugh because they've never felt like a child in their adult life like this did, which makes it a dream come true. Beyond exciting. Yeah. Wow, that's it. That's that's an amazing thing. So, um, so you know, a lot of people obviously, I mean, even the folks, one of the uh, astronauts who went up on Inspiration uh, experienced some, some pretty bad uh, space sickness, I guess we can describe it. Um, you know, they call it the Vomit Comet for a reason. So, uh, from a percentage of people who go through your the experience, how many of them percentage-wise, would you say, do have a rough time with it? I would say about 10% of people have adverse reaction. Um, as compared to the vomit comet, we probably have far less people that get sick. We do many less parabolas than the true KC-135 vomit comet, but we do enjoy and laugh at that name. Um, our coaches are trained to see when someone is starting to get those adverse effects or stomach awareness, if you will. You start to turn clammy and white, um, and we do provide ginger gum for them as well as you know a, a sick bag if needed and then we can bring them back to the seats but it's not as many as you would think so about 10 percent that's that's really yeah that isn't a very high number and that's that's good for research as well right because if we know how many human beings are going to have adverse reactions in microgravity we'll know how many people can't take it up there which makes a, a very big difference as well now okay you've explained my experience what is an experience for an Axiom astronaut? How does it differ? Because I'm assuming it's a little bit more intensive. So for the Axiom astronauts, as well as even Inspiration4, it's very similar to the public experience. Their training that we do on board Zero G is really to just acclimate them again with the zero gravity environment. Less so because they do have their um, centrifuge training. They're doing all sorts of other training beyond just what happens and zero gravity. We do have them work a little bit more with sometimes like glove boxes and things where they might have to maneuver in the air, um, but not not anything too intense. So, um, and just to, out of interest, Sierra Space presenting sponsor here, and obviously they're going to want astronauts for their orbital reef. Um, do you guys have an established relationship with them since Blue Origin's kind of part of what they do? We are definitely working to have a relationship with Sierra Space. We would love to work with them, especially as they start to get Dream Chaser up and running. And then also as they build Orbital Reef, we do have a relationship with Blue Origin right now um, and other space companies that are out there. Excellent. So, wow, I mean, you guys are really providing the full breadth of, you know, the private astronaut, you know, experience. Everybody, it sounds like everybody who's sending up private astronauts is doing it through you guys, or close to it, which is pretty impressive. 
Um, and I must say, uh, you guys have definitely cornered a, a strong market here. Um, and do you anticipate it growing given all these new private space stations going up? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, with the commer commercialization of space, there's just going to be more and more business growth. And because we're the only company permitted by the FAA to fly zero gravity flights within the U.S., um, and that's also the prime market for this business establishment, I only see growth taking place. We're looking to acquire um, an additional plane in the near future, uh, which will allow us to do more research, more media productions, and more consumer and charter flights. Whether it's a team building flight or just family and friends having fun, it really is an opportunity unlike anything else in the world. Well, I'll tell you, you guys have educated me a great deal about what you guys are doing for private space flight. It is incredibly impressive. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to bringing details about this to the viewers. So until we have a lot of people in low Earth orbit, a lot of private companies that have to make use of companies like Zero G, until this becomes a reality to where these sorts of flights are a daily thing and Instead of a weekly thing, I urge all of you to stay angry about space! <laughs>